All right, last video for 5.1. The idea for 5.1 is we're trying to get really comfortable with angles. So in the first video, I gave an introduction to angles, really trying to hammer home the point that we have two different units that we can use to measure angles. And then in the second video, I was like, whoa, if we have two different units to use to measure angles, we better be able to go back and forth between those two. We better be able to convert from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. In this last video, I wanna talk about what are called coterminal angles. And really, this is just another way of thinking about the same thing that we've talked about in the previous two videos. When we talk about a 90 degree angle, or an angle whose measure is pi over two radians. We're talking about a right angle, and that right angle can exist anywhere in space, right? It could be like way over here or something. But for the purposes of our class, we're gonna think about that angle in what's called its standard position. And its standard position is sitting here on, the, on our coordinate plane with the angle sitting right here at the origin, and one of the two line segments that creates this sits on the positive x-axis, and we measure this angle counterclockwise. Another way we could think about the angle is just sort of where we end up. If we're always gonna start, informally speaking, over here on the positive x-axis, and we always measure them in a counterclockwise direction, we can think about a 90 degree or pi over two radian angle as the one that ends, informally speaking, up here on the positive y-axis. Similarly, a 180 degree angle or a pi radian angle would end over here on the negative x-axis. A 355 degree angle would end just short of our x-axis down here somewhere. The point that I'm trying to make is another way we can think about these angles is where they end up, where they terminate if you draw them in their standard position. The reason that's really useful is because we're going to want to let our angles go beyond 360 degrees. Like what could that even be? I want to be able to talk about a 450 degree angle. But wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. 450 degrees, that's more than 360 degrees. So I start out over here from my standard position on the positive side of the x-axis, and I start going around in this circle. There's 90, there's 180, 270, and now I'm to 360 degrees. What do I do? Well, you just keep on going. And we just keep on going until we get back over here. 360 and another 90 would be 450 degrees. And you're like, that doesn't even make sense. You can't have an angle more than 360 degrees. 450 degrees is just the same as 90 degrees. Well, yes and no. They're not the same. I mean, 90 is a different number than 450, but there's definitely some similarities. If I had to describe the similarity between a 90 degree angle and a 450 degree angle, if we talk about where the angle terminates, we could say that, oh, a 450 degree angle and a 90 degree angle both terminate at the exact same spot. They are co-terminal. If instead of drawing these angles like I've been doing here, we just ask ourselves the question, where would these angles end or terminate if they were drawn in standard position, then the positive y axis here would not only represent a 90 degree angle, but also a 450 degree angle. It would also represent an 810 degree angle. Wait, where did that come from? Well, 810, let's see, all the way around the circle once is 360 degrees. Another lap around the circle, 360 plus 360, I'm up to 720. I'm still not to my 810. I'd have to go another 90 to get to my 810. So I take two full laps around the circle and end up in the same spot that I ended up when I drew a 450 degree angle or when I drew a 90 degree angle. 90 degrees, 450 degrees, and 810 degrees are all co-terminal. In addition to being able to talk about angles that are more than 360 degrees, I wanna be able to talk about angles that are negative. Whoa, what would that mean to have a negative angle? Well, all it means is we're gonna measure it in the opposite direction. So if I talked about a negative 270 degree angle, I'm still starting on the positive x-axis like I always do, but since we normally measure in the counterclockwise direction, negative angles will be measured in the clockwise direction. And so if I measured negative 270 degrees, that would take me from my positive x-axis here all the way up to my positive y-axis. What I'm saying is not only 810 and 450 degrees are coterminal with 90 degrees, but so is negative 270 degrees. More generally, any two angles that are separated by a multiple of 360 degrees are coterminal. What do you mean separated by a multiple of 360 degrees? Well, the claim again was that 810 and 90 were coterminal. The reason they're coterminal is because if I subtract the two of them, if I figure out how much they're separated by, I get 720. And 720 is some whole number multiple, two in this case, of 360. So the reason 810 and 90 are coterminal is because the difference between them is a multiple of 360. 
Note that 810 and negative 270 are also coterminal because if I took 810 and I subtracted negative 270, remember I'm subtracting because I want to figure out how much they're separated by, and I just happen to be subtracting a negative this time. Well, let's see, subtracting a negative is like adding, so I get 1080 here, which is three times 360. What you'll see in this class is typically we're gonna to wanna to be able to reference an angle that's between zero and 360 degrees, but often we'll start out with an angle that's not between zero and 360 degrees. So what you might be asked is to find an angle between zero and 360 degrees, that's what this notation's saying, it has to be greater than or equal to zero but less than 360, and we want that angle to be coterminal with 810. Well, if you're asked to find a coterminal angle, all you have to do is add or subtract multiples of 360. Because 810 is greater than this range, I'm gonna subtract 360. When I subtract 360, I get 450. What that's telling me is that 810 degrees is coterminal with 450 degrees. Oh yeah, I saw that in my picture. 810 and 450 would both end up up here on my positive y-axis. And that's all true, but 450 degrees is not within this range. So all I have to do is subtract 360 degrees again. I subtract 360 degrees again, and now I get 90 degrees. An angle that's in between zero and 360 degrees that's coterminal with 810 degrees, that answer would be 90 degrees. And there's nothing special about the positive y-axis here. We can do that for any angle. And there's nothing special about degrees. We can do all this same work in radians. Let's pick on pi over four radians. Maybe you remember from the previous video that pi over four radians, AKA 45 degrees, is this angle that's pictured. An angle that's kind of halfway to our positive y-axis if we measure it from our positive x-axis. Well, what other angles in radians would leave us at this exact same spot? Well, since it's two pi to get all the way around the circle, we'd end up at this same spot. We would be co-terminal if we did two pi and another pi over four. Two pi is eight pi over four. So two pi and another pi over four would be nine pi over four. What I'm saying is that pi over four plus two pi is nine pi over four. So pi over four and nine pi over four are co-terminal. We had our definition up here that said any two angles separated by a multiple of 360 degrees are coterminal. That's true, but maybe I can add to this, separated by a multiple of 360 degrees or by a multiple of two pi, depending on whether my angles are measured in degrees or in radians. And just like with degrees, when we could measure these in the negative direction, with radians, we can measure these in the negative direction. If I measured an angle that was seven pi over four radians, but I measured it in the opposite direction. So now we're talking about a measure of negative seven pi over four radians. Note that that would leave me at this exact same spot that I ended up with pi over four. So not only are pi over four and nine pi over four coterminal, negative seven pi over four is also coterminal with these two measures. Here's the last example. What if I were supposed to find an angle between zero and two pi that is coterminal with negative 23 pi over four? Negative 23 pi over four clearly is not in this interval here. Well, for one thing, this interval doesn't contain any negative numbers and this is negative. But since I know that angles are coterminal if they're separated by two pi, I can just add or subtract two pi to this number to come up with an angle that is coterminal to this angle. And if I want my angle to be between zero and two pi, I better start adding two pi's to this number because this number is currently negative. If I subtract two pi from this, I'm gonna become more and more negative. I'm never gonna get into this interval. So I'll take my negative 23 pi over four and I'll add two pi. Two pi is eight pi over four. Negative 23 pi over four plus eight pi over four, that gives me negative 15 pi over four. That's not enough, so I better do it again. Negative 15 pi over four plus eight pi over four would get me up to negative seven pi over four. I'm getting closer, but I'm still not within these bounds, so I have to do it again. Negative seven pi over four plus another eight pi over four, another two pi, that gets me up to one pi over four, or pi over four. What I'm saying is negative 23 pi over four is coterminal with pi over four. This would be the answer to my question. It's also coterminal with nine pi over four, for example, because we saw that nine pi over four and pi over four were coterminal, but nine pi over four is not within these bounds because nine fourths is like two and a quarter, and that's more than two. So the only angle between zero and two pi that is coterminal with this angle is one that measures pi over four. It's worth pointing out that if you didn't wanna do this over and over again, you might get kind of clever and notice that 23 fourths is between five and six, roughly speaking. So I have somewhere between negative five pi and negative six pi in here. So adding two pi won't be enough. I'm gonna have to add, let's see, four pi wouldn't be enough either. I'm gonna have to add six pi to get something that is between negative five pi 
and negative six pi all the way up to a positive number. What I'm saying is instead of adding two pi, eight pi over four, I could have added three copies of this, six pi, which would be 24 pi over four and gotten directly from here to this angle that's coterminal. From this video, what I'd like you to get is, it would be nice if I could give you two angles, maybe both in degrees, and ask you if they're coterminal. And all you'd have to do is figure out if the difference between their angle measures are a multiple of 360 degrees. And instead of those angle measures being given in degrees, they could be given in radians, in which case you'd have to figure out if the difference in their angle measures are a multiple of two pi. The other thing that I'd like you to be able to do is if I give you an angle, whether that angle is in degrees or in radians that is not between zero and 360 degrees or zero and two pi radians, whether it's greater than this interval or less than this interval, I would like you to be able to come up with an angle in that interval that is coterminal with the given angle. And all that means is add or subtract 360s or add or subtract two pi's until you end up in that range.